everybody, it's Sharon. I'm the Accidental Art Maker, and I'm so glad that you're here with me tonight, or whenever you're watching, to learn about the new IOD products that got released today. Um, so, a little backstory, um, there were a ton of products released today, um, and we had three transfers released a couple of weeks ago. Why, you may want to know? Because of the supply chain breakdown around the world. Uh, so, uh, a ton, I was gonna say a bad word, a shit ton of our stuff got stuck on a boat and has been like floating around the ocean for a very long time. It got to the um, port last week and they hustled it on out to the IOD sisters who then went and just were like sh shipping freaks, getting us our products as fast as possible and then immediately scheduling the release today and the live with you guys. And here we are um, ready to share with you. So I hope you caught the IOD sisters earlier today. They are always such a hoot and such a crack up. Um, they always seem to have technical things going on. Right now, I don't know if you can hear it, but I've got dogs barking in the background. Uh, it's always something, right? Um, but they handled it with such grace and uh, humor. You know, you just got to love them. You just got to roll with it is what I think they said. So um, anyways, um, so I'm Sharon, as I was saying when we started. Um, I'm the accidental art maker. You may have found me through the IOD website, through Facebook, through YouTube, or you might have just found me uh, my uh, e-commerce website, accidental art maker, through searching on Google. Um, a little bit about me, and then we'll jump right into the products that got released today. So um, I've been an IOD stockist for about six or seven months now. I've been using IOD for two years, and I've been painting and upcycling furniture for about, I always say seven years, but it's more like nine years. About nine years ago, I started off with a couple of cans of chalk paint, a couple of stencils, and transformed a piece of old furniture, and I've been hooked ever since. Um, my mission has kind of, it's evolved, especially the last few years. Uh, when I hit menopause about two years ago, I didn't know what the heck was happening, and I found art to be a way to help me maintain my sanity through menopause, through COVID, um, all the wonderful things going on in the world right now. And I mean that sarcastically and with love. <laughs> so explicitly my mission now, which I feel like I have finally found a mission in this business is um, that I love and support every woman who's discovering herself midlife or older, um, and is creating art as a way to express that discovery. I, I just can't say it enough how important it is for um, women my age, younger, older, that um, even younger in your 30s, like, um, but I don't know, something happens when you hit midlife and you kind of get this give no fucks. Uh, that's how I'm kind of feeling these days when that totally is playing out into me doing my art and how I feel about um, creating. Like, I don't care if I mess up. Um, I don't care. Um, kind of, I can fix it. And I have got all these wonderful products with IoT. Anyways, I won't. I will get off of my um, soapbox right now. Hey, Shannon. I haven't seen you for a long time. Hope you're doing well. I haven't done lives for a while. I've been feeling a little shy in front of the camera. I don't know why. I'm in front of it all day long for my day job. <laughs> Anyways, um, let's get right into it. Um, while you're watching, tell me where you're watching from. Shannon, introduce yourself to people because I know you're here in Washington State where I am at, but nobody else maybe knows either. And Last time we talked, you were also about to work on a drop cloth, I believe. So we'd love to hear about that. And if you think any of the products you saw today will end up on a drop cloth, because I know it's the latest, uh, the latest thing. Okay, so let's get to going here. I'm going to hide Shannon's comment, and I'm going to hide, let's see, my banner right here. And, uh, oh. Stop playing video. Nope. All right. Well, don't worry. I'll play it again. <laughs> um, how embarrassing. Okay. 
I was going to have this big reveal and everything. Okay, so let's start from the top. Um, we have two new molds and uh, they're frames two and rosettes. Uh, I have a little video um, after this to show you. Uh, I did some uh, fun time lapse with the frames two and uh, they're just so pretty and there's so many details. So I'm gonna share that with you. Um, and then we have, um, after we have our two new molds, which are very good size, we've got a few inlays here. So we've got, uh, this is Gregory's catalog right here. It's huge. Um, outdoor signage, there's so many different things that you can do with this one. Um, I haven't even, frankly, even looked at this one because I've been so stuck on a couple of the other inlays um, that we have in here. Um, this next one, the Morocco, well, I'm calling it the Morocco, but it's just called Morocco. Um, I had so much fun uh, using this inlay on um, a little um, chest that I got from um, an antique store. Totally changed the way it looks. Got some pictures of that for you too. So stick around for that. And then, um, okay, so this is Queen of the Nile. And apparently there was a transfer of Queen of the Nile that got um, retired a few years ago. So a lot of people are super excited about this. Um, this artwork here in the background, it's its not mine, it's Ellen J. Goods. She is like the master of all things IOD. There's a few stock guests who are just incredibly amazing, artistically talented that I strive to be, and Ellen is definitely one of them. When I first saw Queen of the Nile inlay, I was like, no way am I doing that. Like, I will mess it up. It will look horrible. Da, 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 da. And then I saw Ellen's and I was like, I could totally do that. Why am I telling myself that I'm not capable of figuring this inlay out? But I can. Um, and then what are our other inlays we got here? So we've got, oh, this one's so pretty. So this one's called Paradise. One of the questions I got today um, from one of my customers is, oh, I see that one of the inlays is hot pink. Is that something we can expect? So the inlay isn't actually hot pink. It's it is applied on top of hot pink paint. So they are transparent. There are places on the inlay that um, whatever color paint you have on the piece underneath, that shows through. It makes each inlay incredibly unique to your style and taste. So between whatever piece of furniture you pick out, whatever colors or blends or patterns that you have, um, you have with it, it just makes the opportunity for uniqueness is just un unlimited. <laughs> okay, and then uh, we have two stamps. Uh, let me pull up the stamps here. Um, so uh, if you are a junk journaler, if you like to scrapbook, if you want, if you love the stamp kindest regards because of the texture and kind of mystery it brings in the background, then these stamps are for you. Um, this one right here, Le Courier, is, um, let me hold it up right here. So it is, um, it could be one big stamp like this, or all these columns come out right here. And the headline and the banner comes out right here. Um, Again, you can use this a million different ways to make your piece of art unique. Um, one of the sisters had taken this, and I don't know if it was white paint or white ink, and she had stamped her shirt with it. It was it was amazing. It was so so cute. Um, and then our other stamp is also font based. That that is a uh, letter press which is this one right here. All of these little letters are individual, all these numbers, and they come out. You can put together a title, a phrase, you um, use the thin mounts, you ink it up, you paint it up, and you press it down. I don't have any demos today to share with you on this. I'm saving this for something a little bit longer. I have a few ideas, but I can't figure out which one I want to share with you guys first. But um, if you like your words, if you like your phrases, 
Um, I personally love song lyrics, like you can go your own way. Um, these boots were made for walking, F around, find out, all those fun things. You can go onto shirts, onto China, onto your wall. Um, so many different ways you can have fun with it. Okay, so that is our, those are the products from um, a high level. And uh, we've got a few comments here. Oh, Shannon uh, is in Sumner, Washington. Um, and so is the stamp. Yes, stamps are separate pieces. They're so cool. You'll be able to do a million things with them, no doubt. Um, really exciting. Um, and um, so next, I want to show you a, a video of, let me remove myself here. Back in the stream. Hopefully you guys could hear me while I was talking there. 
Um, okay, so yeah, the Facebook group Tiny Paintings, pretty awesome. Um, if you guys are just joining in, please let me know where you're watching from. If you've used IOD products before, what, what have you tried? What kind of experience have you had? Um, my shop is at www.accidentalartmaker.com. Um, and we are looking at the um, latest release that just came out in IOD products today. This next one I want to share with you is the, um, let me remove this so that we can see more of it here. So this is the Morocco inlay. And if you haven't used inlays before, they can be a little bit daunting the first time that you try them. The first time I was using the, the inlay, I messed up big time. I actually have a very funny YouTube video um, on my channel that shows what not to do with inlays. Uh, I learned a lot from that and I read a little bit, watched a few more demos before I created what you're seeing me make right here. Um, I have a shimmery paint that I'm using and it's like a shiny metallic pink paint. And when I first went to put the inlay down, here, as you can see, I had a lot of problems and I had to like lift the in inlay up and lay it back down, almost like a sheet on top of a bed. And I was worried because I was coating the inside, I was coating the paint side of the inlay with my wet paint. Um, but this side of the jewelry chest actually turned out to be the best side of all. So here I'm, you can see me where I'm pulling up paint right here. Um, don't let things like that freak you out or turn you off from working with inlays. Um, I did, I just went back over with my brush and spread it around a little bit more. And then I laid the inlay back down and you'll see me go over it with a brayer to smooth out all the wrinkles. It turned out great. So yes, I fumbled a little bit here. I moved things around. It didn't matter. It turned out fantastic. Really had fun with this inlay that I'm totally in love with the piece that I created with it. Um, I don't know if I'm going to sell it or not because it's so good. <laughs> oh look, here I am again. Put it back down, sure, just let it go. This is why I'm calling myself the accidental art maker. I figure some of this stuff out by accident and it just happens. And um, fortunately in this case, <laughs> look at me. I don't know what, what the heck am I doing here? I obviously had a big struggle with it. Um, hopefully you won't watch me struggle for too much longer here and I'll be coming out with a prayer. Maybe, maybe I should just fast forward it. So anyways, you can see here, don't be scared to use inlays because if I'm not messing this up, there's no way that you can mess this up. Um, yeah, so, oh, look at that. I didn't realize I played around with it so much. I'm almost kind of embarrassed now that I'm sharing this with you guys. <laughs> All right, looks like I'm trying to smooth it out now. I've decided, well, if this doesn't work, it doesn't work. But look, here it is, uh, all nice and, and, whoops, it's nice and dry right here. Now you're going to see me, um, it's been drying for a little bit. I go back over the inlay with some water I'm squirting on here. It's a fine mist from a little squirt bottle. You don't want to put on too much. And what happens here is, um, the water reactivates the inlay, it gets wet, and when you go to take the paper off of the, your piece that you're working on, the inlay um, is loosened away from the paper that's been holding it, and it releases onto the paint that it dried to underneath. So that's the little uh, patented uh, process for these inlays that we have here. All right, I'm not sure why my video, oh, I think I hit pause. That's probably why it's not playing. All right, so, oh yeah, here I am with the brayer. I'm smoothing it down. So like you see the wrinkles right there? You wanna try and get as many of those out as possible. It looks cool if you leave them in. It actually looks almost like a broken glass. You can sand it down and make it look like you want it that way. So even when you mess up between sanding, between, um, some dark wax between reactivating the inlay. I could go back onto this with a wet paintbrush and on my piece and start moving the paint around to blur it, smooth it, um, connect 
connect it to if I if I brought two seams together and they were a little bit off, I could make it look more connected with a little bit of water and a paintbrush. So there are ways to mess this up, but there are ways to fix it too. So do not be intimidated to try an inlay. You will have so much fun with it. Here's the beautiful part right here. Watch this. Okay, so there's I've got two magical little parts right here that give me goosebumps. So here I'm figuring out I need a little bit more water up in this corner. Um, it's it's not coming off too easily. So you're gonna see me well off screen, I'm squirting it right there. And you can see where the inlay is now adhering to the paint that was underneath it. And watch me peel it up here. Isn't that beautiful? The shiny pink paint underneath it is a contrast to the fat, flat bold colors on top and it's just so feminine and sexy i just love it i love it can't get enough of it um okay so next is the front right i've got these handles i don't know if you could tell here but i've cut slits in the inlay to lay down over on top of the handles here um, it's dried, it's gone through the process, and now I'm going to lift it up, squirting it a little bit right there just to help loosen it. And I'm going to lift it up. It's a little bit speed bumpy over the handles there, but don't worry, it still turns out pretty darn good. I have the bureau drawers here um, painted a dark green shiny because I wanted some contrast. When you look at Moroccan furniture, you often see like kind of panels of different solid chunks of color. So I didn't want the whole thing pink and I wanted where you see the drawers poking out to uh, have that, that green to it. Give it a little bit of um, a pattern and something a little bit maybe mysterious going on. So here you go, I've peeled it up right here. You can see the little patches where it's missing. But it totally plays into the old aged uh, Moroccan piece of furniture that I'm going through. So here we go. So that's the back. This is the back side right here where I kept lifting it up and putting it down, lifting it up and putting it down like I was trying to get a sheet on a bed. It turned out perfect. Um, even when I was messing around with it on wet paint forever. Turned out really awesome. So that's the back. This is the front right here. Uh, you can kind of see where some of the drawers are darker than the other ones. Um, and then the top left hand side, I left the bright pink just to give it a little bit of contrast. Um, love the handles on this. It came with a drawer this way. It was just this old wooden um, beat up chest, probably from the 60s. The wood was kind of on the crappy side. You can see it right here. It was pretty, but isn't it so much better with an inlay? I mean, that's two coats of paint and an inlay, a few hours of time, and I'm in love. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna be selling this or the summer when I go to the, uh, thanks Shannon, when I go to the uh, Camus Antique and Vintage Fair, all the pieces I'm working on now will be for sale that then, or I might keep it, I'm not sure. So um, yeah, I love this. So. That is, um, that's the inlay. And let me remove this from the screen. So let me show you, this is what the, um, let me show you what the Morocco one looks like. So this is what it looks like before you use it. This is the inlay side right here. This is the back side where it's paper and you can see the grid right there the grid helps you line up your inlays to whatever piece you're working on um, if you like your right degree angles and your things off the square then these lines are made for you um, and then again this side is the paint so this is the side that goes down um, the inlay goes down this way on top of wet paint you let it dry usually takes anywhere from 10 minutes from an hour you use the wet mist over the inlay and then you peel it off. Uh, and then you put your inlay, you can reuse them. So it's not one and done. You put it down and let it dry flat. And now this is what, let me do a side-by-side -side comparison here for you. So this one right here in front is what the inlay looks like when, after you've used it and I can use it again. So I'm going to keep using these and see how many, how, how many applications I can get out of it. 
you can see a little bit of the pink in it. It picks up the pink paint. So I could get a little ghost of pink on whatever I use it on next, especially if it's like a nice white color. We'll see, I haven't decided what I'm gonna use it on next. So those are the inlays. They're fantastic. Um, let me just show you guys if you're just joining. So this is the mold I made earlier in the film that you were just looking at. It pulled it the right way. So you can see when it dries, it cracks. There are definitely ways to avoid that. I like the cracked look because I'm going for antique and aged and um, old. Um, when you guys see this next time and it's all done, you'll be like, cool, I love that. Um, let's see if we can get the camera to focus on the little cherubs. But if you can see the details in here, let the camera focus, there we go. It's so beautiful. There are people who use the molds. I have customers who turn these into cookies or they use them as fondant, is that you pronounce it, on a cake. I, I want this to be a Pop-Tart. I want like the fanciest Pop-Tart in the world filled with jelly inside of these things. I think it's making my mouth water just talking about it. Let me show you that other frame. This one's also got a crack. This one's a little bit more, so a little bit more too cracked right here for me. So I'm gonna go in and I'll take a little bit of the air dry clay and I'll just tuck it into the cracks and smooth it down. I do, I do like these two cracks right here and I'm wondering how I play that into um, whatever art I go with. I was originally thinking about decoupage for this, but I don't know um, what the um, decoupage would look like on top of a cracked frame. So I don't know, I might find out, might share it with you, might not share it with you. <laughs> um, and let's see, we're coming up on almost 30 minutes. Yeah, that's how long I wanted to go. So, um, so that's what I've got for you guys today. I'm going to be working on rosettes this weekend. I've got this great wooden bowl. Um, I went on an adventure two weekends ago with my daughter and one of her best friends, not to Goodwill, but to the bins at Goodwill. If you've ever been to the bins at Goodwill, it's an experience. I think everybody should try and go just once. It's crazy. It is this warehouse full. It's My daughter described it as three steps up from dumpsters diving. I actually think it's maybe a step below dumpster diving because they're basically like open-faced dumpsters and there are people just pulling stuff out. If you touch something at the same time, be prepared to fight for it. If you accidentally touch someone's cart as you walk on by, be prepared to fight. Um, they wheel bins in and people will stand in line. They blow a whistle and they dive into these bins, pulling out clothes, pulling out pieces. It's crazy. People wear plastic gloves in there because things are so gross and dirty. It's almost like the Goodwill rejects. I don't, and but some of the stuff I saw, it's not rejects. So I'm not really sure what the decision making is for things to get there. I just know that I left there with a bowl and a book. Uh, my daughter and her friend left there with like 20 pounds of clothes each. I don't wear anything from this place, but that's me. I'm not a teenager. So anyways, <laughs> anyways, I'll be working on a bowl this weekend. Maybe I'll put an inlay on it um, along with the rosettes, but I have some pretty good ideas for that. So stay tuned for more videos from me and tutorials. I have a YouTube channel, Accidental Art Maker. Search for me there. I've got a ton of stuff up there. Um, I've got a, my Facebook page. Uh, you may be watching me right now from Facebook or from YouTube. If you are, please like and leave a comment. I really appreciate hearing feedback from you guys. One piece of feedback I'll give you, which is kind of funny, is that I, I have a bit of a lisp and somebody was like, well, do you drink at every, at every show you do? No, I do not. <laughs> Um, and I actually wear Invisalign. My teeth, when I started getting older, started just all crowding up together where it made it impossible to eat without being in pain because I kept finding the inside of my lip. And now I'm like towards the tail end of wearing Invisalign. My teeth move so much, or if I had the Invisalign in, it's like this extra layer of plastic inside my mouth. I lisp. So hopefully, or I slur. I explore a lot. 
And uh, so, uh, no, I do not uh, drink at every live I do. Although I wouldn't mind doing it because I get so nervous doing these things. And then I talk extra faster and then I slur. So that's what that's about. Anyways, um, yeah, leave your questions um, in the comments area. Please like the video. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe. All those fun things you've heard everybody else tell you to do a million times. It does mean a lot. Some days uh, it kind of keeps me getting, keeps me going. <laughs> oh, and I have a discount for you guys. Um, the bundle code is activated. You get 10% off if you go to my website, accidentalartmaker.com. Um, put in the word bundle um, at checkout, and that will give you 10% off. Um, I'm going to leave that up and running probably through the weekend. The only way you're going to know about it is if you listen here and now. So, um, uh, and or if you're a subscriber today, if you're a subscriber to my email, uh, then you got a discount in your email today from me. I won't tell you what that is. You have to go look at Stephen the Bundle. <laughs> so anyways, um, so I've got a couple of discounts going for you guys. Um, really appreciate all of you. I kind of circling back to my mission of um, art being a way to express ourselves midlife. It is so important. Um, I love selling IOD, but I'm not stuck on it. Watercolor, sketching, writing, taping, making videos like this. Please find a way to find a way to express your creativity. It is, I think, super important to us as we age to express ourselves, the feelings that we have, the physical stuff that we're going through. All of that can come out and tell a story on paper, on canvas, in clay, if it, you know, just, um, give it a go, see what happens, see how you feel, come back here and let me know. All right, that's it for me. Um, thanks again so much. I'm gonna share with you a, a new feature from StreamYard. I'm gonna dance my way out of here with some rock music. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody, have a wonderful evening. Get your IOD on. Enjoy yourself. Bye.